fucked up. Like we're over here like fighting for this guy. Like, you know, it's like kind of feel like they're pitting women against each other. That's what it felt like, you know, like why am I hating this girl? Cause she had a one-on-one date with him. Like this is not okay. You mm-hmm. know? And I'm like, if there was a woman up here that we were fighting for, I doubt it would be this way. Mm. Hey y'all, welcome back to Made It Out. I'm so excited about today. Jasmine Good is sitting on the couch with us. She is a former Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, Jets cheerleader, Warriors cheerleader. She's also the queen of reality TV, has been on so many shows, including right now, Bravo's The Valley. And she was a part of Bachelor Nation, which is what we are talking about today. Yes. Thank you for being here. (laughs) Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah. First... Let's get to know you. Tell me a little bit about yourself growing up. What was your journey with your sexuality like? I think when I was little, I was always like attracted to women and boys and girls. And I'm like, ooh, you know, but I didn't know like what that was called. I mm-hmm. didn't know like what being gay was or bi or, you know, I didn't, when I was little, I didn't even know what like being straight was. I kind of just like always like was attracted to like people and like their energy. Mm-hmm. Thankfully where I grew up, like it was so open, you know, I had teachers who were gay with my family. It was okay. There was never like an issue with like, you can't be gay or Mm. you can't like this person. My parents were just very open and um, kind of like, it was never like a thing where I had to sit down and say, mom and dad, like, I think I like women. It was just more like, hey, they knew and they are like, okay, she has a girlfriend now. Totally fine. I love that. That was nice. I just kind of like, I guess with me, it was just more like navigating it on my own and not, I feel blessed where I didn't have to feel like ashamed or anything for it. Tell me what led you to signing up for The Bachelor? Well, I didn't apply for the bachelor. My actually, my best friend was approached and told me to do it. So, and I was like, fine, why not? Like, I kind of wanted a free trip. I would just broke up with my ex at the time. I was going to move back to New Jersey. Um, so you are travel, just winging it. You're going the top in. ten. <laughs> That's all I remember her telling you. Make it the top 10. You have to make it the top 10. I'm like, why? She's like, everyone that makes it the top 10 goes on paradise. And that's like, that's where you want to be because there's more options when you're at paradise. It's like you get to date like multiple people at one time. And I'm like, yes, that sounds more my speed, you know? Right. You are like, I'm here to go on a free trip and to make it to top 10 to get on a different <laughs> show. You do not give a fuck about Nick Files. Yes. Okay. It, I crumbled. Like Nick was, okay. When I first saw him, I was like, wow, he's a good looking guy. Not bad. Tall. I was like, okay, we can, we can kind of deal with this. It wasn't bad until he opened his mouth. And I was oh. just like, <sighs> I was like, oh, this is what I have to deal with right now. But I was like, all right, Jasmine, just do what you got to do. Top 10, top 10. Paradise. We want to get to paradise. That's what we want, right? But night one was insane. You get there, you know, they're like, here, take some shots before you go, you know, out there, before you get in the limo. They're like, take some shots, some fireball. And I remember just like lights everywhere. You're on this big production set. And I'm like, holy crap, what's about to happen? Because this is your first, this is my first time ever doing like a sh- any reality type of competition, TV. reality show. So I'm thinking it's just going to be like go in there and just like talk about yourself and like make this person fall in love with you. No, it's like a game. So you take the shots, you get, in the, <laughs> get in the limo, you go roll up to the mansion, you get out of the car, you give your little speech, whatever you want to do. Like, I think I brought rings for him because they were like, why don't you bring like your size engagement ring and like show him? And I was like, I don't care. So they're just feeding the you, tip. they're feeding you kind of this limo. Kind of. Yeah. Everybody had like a gimmick or something to do. And if you didn't, you didn't show up with one. So now they're I, yeah, they're like, what do you want to do? I was like, I don't know. Was like, <laughs> they're like, well, we can give you rings. Sure. Whatever. I okay. thought it was funny. And at the time, like, I wasn't really going into it that serious, right. I think, which is probably why I just drank the whole time and just was like <laughs> partying because I really didn't care. And then walked in the house and everybody's beautiful. All the girls are like dressed and everyone's just perfect. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, okay, your confidence goes from here to like here. And I'm Which thinking, is crazy because you've been around beautiful women. Yes, but it was just something about it is because you're in this room with like 35 women fighting for one person's attention Ugh. and you hearing everybody just talking about like their life and you start to get like, you know, self-conscious a little bit. And I'm like, wait, I know who I am. I know I'm a badass, you know, woman, but to see all these beautiful girls and the things that they're bringing to the table, you think, holy crap. Like I didn't know there was like a, it's like a science to it. You know, you got to learn when to jump in there and get the attention from them, know when to steal them. And I just wasn't in this world where I had to fight for like, somebody's attention to like, you know, tell me I'm pretty or like, can I steal you for a date? I'm not used to that. I'm used to somebody just coming up to me. Like I have great confidence, but my confidence was shattered on that show. 
I want to know what, where were you at with your sexuality when you went on The Bachelor? When I went on The Bachelor, I bisexual. I'm bisexual. I was at the time I dated a couple girls on my on the dress was like my first time dating a woman, so I was open, kind of fluid, open to dating anybody. But going on the show, I remember being in the audition casting and telling them like, "Hey, like I've dated women, I've dated men, and you know, that's you know what I'm open to." And they're like, "Okay, well." have you like talk about some men that you've dated and I'm like Ugh. okay but because I, I mean I just literally I'm sitting in this hotel room for hours talking I mean, hours talking about love and like who I am and then you know when you're being told well yeah oh that's great but can we talk about the guy you dated I want to hear about that experience with those men and they want to know about the experience with like athletes because I was a cheerleader like it was always like let's talk about that and overlook everything else. So it's crazy to think because they want to the fit time. their narrative. Exactly. They want to fit their story. But you don't think of it about it at the time. You're just like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. Like, you know, you especially know. when you're like, essentially in that case, you're like trying to get a job kind of. Yeah. You're like, you want to sell yourself and you're right. like, okay, you want to be picked and you know, there's like a million girls here auditioning. So you're just going to, you know, f go like, go with the flow, you know, it was just weird, but there was actually a girl on my season who was like the first, I guess, open bisexual, that's what they say, Jamie. She was like the first one. They made it a big deal in my season. And I was just like, okay, but like, how come she, but I think that was her storyline. Like everybody had like a storyline. Mine was the dancer. Hers was, you know, being the open bisexual girl. One girl had like some, you know, Corinne, I don't know if she, she was on my season. She was like the crazy one, like had a oh, nanny. Oh, with the nanny. Yes. yes. So, like, everybody had like their thing. So I think they wanted to keep it like that. So even though they knew that I, you know, I'm open to date, you know, this is my sexuality, this is who I am. That wasn't a part that I could talk about, which I, or they just kind of cut that out and kept it under wrap. I remember having a conversation with Jamie, the other um, bi girl on the show, and I'm like, we're talking about dating women. Like we had a whole conversation with, on camera about our experience and, you know, her ex and my ex, but they didn't show any of that. And I'm like, okay, that was a moment, you know, that was a moment for them to have that teaching to show like viewers, like, hey, like, there are women out here that are bisexual that, you know, are on The Bachelor that are open to dating a man and open dating a woman. I'm like, why didn't they show that moment? I really wish they did. I think about that all the time. We talked about it, me and her. And I'm like, that was a good moment, you know, for just America to mm -hmm. see. But I'm like, of course, they're not going to show that because one, ABC. And two, I don't know if it had a lot to do with like us being going on another type, like being black too. Like she was a black woman, I'm a black woman. So I'm like, uh, maybe that had to do with it too. I just don't know. I still don't know. And that producer who interviewed us that day is gone. So mm. I know I never got to like talk to them about it. They made a choice for sure. Yeah, that's what it felt like because we talked about it so many times, like me and her and having her there was nice because we can like relate to each other. Like, oh God, here we go fighting for this dude. Like, this is so stupid. Why can we have like a girl here too? That'd be great. Like if it was like, you know, a man in a female lead, awesome but that would never happen I mean why won't that ever I happen? don't know the bachelor's been around for like what 30 years I don't even know why haven't they switched it up come on it's 2024 like I don't understand like there are people I'm sure for, I know for a fact every season there's like multiple people that are like gay or bi and they just haven't come out yet oh or they're uncomfortable or they could be in the same situation where they maybe they talked about it and they haven't had that space or they weren't allowed to you know, go deeper mm -hmm. and, you know, about their selves. I don't know. But it's this agenda that they're trying to push this. Yes. And that's why sometimes I can't get behind the bachelor. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, you guys, like we need to evolve. And I don't think there's any evolving there. Yeah. There's and no room for it's, it. Yeah. It's the same thing. And it's like times are changing and they need to see that because there are contestants who have, you know, been very open about their, you know, sexuality like, let's do something about that. Use that. Like, this is a moment, but they have it. And I don't think it'll ever change. Because it would also make for so, like, the TV would be so much better. 100%. Did Nick know you were bisexual? No, because I had no time to talk to him. Like, I only saw Nick maybe once a week. Like, and I didn't have one-on-one -on -one dates. So all my dates were group dates. And oh, my God. the group dates, you're not really with him. So it's like you're doing activities with the girls because you have to make TV. Um, and then you have like two seconds later in the group date. All right, we got to start making out because I need to stay. I needed him to know that I am a good kisser so he can keep me around. Like Because there was no way we can really get deep unless you had a one-on-one. -on -one. That's like one date alone solo. So you're There's having no, time. no you, you're having no conversations with like, did, no. what is the I'm making out and then a girl's coming in. <laughs> hey, can I steal him? I'm like, I literally just 
got here? Like, can we have a conversation? I think I talked with my family a little bit and like just my past about being a dancer, but we didn't really go deep at all. There was no time. Oh my God. I had no time. So there was no time to say, Hey, by the way, like, you know, I'm into women. He probably would have thought that was sexy. I'm sure yeah. men are idiots and they think like, that would have yeah, kept you around. Like, exactly. He would have been like, <laughs> you should have led with that. Like me and Jamie actually <laughs> sleeping in the same bunk. Oh Do you want to come hang out with us? <laughs> God. Christ. Literally. How does the show perpetuate heteronormativity behind the scenes? In that world, you're cut off from everything. There's no phone. There's no TV. There's no magazines. You can't read. You can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So all you're doing all day is talking about your feelings and love and Nick. That was literally every day. I remember hiding under clothes and like um, our room because you can't like can't take naps. So I was like hiding under like uh, dirty clothes, just like get away for a moment. And then I'll hear like our little intern producer, like, Jasmine, where are you? <laughs> Your mic isn't like, on. Oh, we know it's here, but we can't find you. And I'm like, just give me two minutes to be alone and not talk about love. Like it was so annoying. And it was, it, it's really kind of toxic in a way, you know, um, like and when you're in it, you don't think of it this way. You're thinking you're in competition mode. You just want to get that one-on-one -on -one so you can make it to the next you know, part, you want to make it to the top 10, you want to make it to paradise, you want to be shown on TV. So that's where the drama comes in with the other girls. That's when like this, you know, you start like fighting with each other and arguing because th you're, there's nothing else to do. Yeah. Like there's really nothing else to do, but drink. And then, and then drink we're drinking. And fight. We're drink drinking and fighting. fighting. They're drinking and I like him more. Or like he likes, you know, his connection with her is way deeper than mine. Like I'm sad. Like I'm going to get sent home. Like clearly like that's, it's a mental <laughs> it's so funny. So sorry. the emotions it's so messed up. The, the emotions show. that you're seeing because sometimes these girls are fucking emotional and yes. like upset. Yeah, you cry. But yeah, but it's just because you're fucking sleep deprived. Yeah. You're drunk. <laughs> you're drunk, you wake up, you're not really eating. I mean, unless like cause when you get up, you have to sometimes go straight to interviews and start talking about what happened the next day or talk about the drama that's going in the house. They don't like I'm saying they don't like starve you. There's food. Like, you know, you just have to make it yourself normally. Um, but half the time you're just so busy and you're just like. And to like, think that we're pumping up <laughs> men like this. And that's what was bothering me too. And that was the moment when me and Jamie, they don't show up. We had a whole conversation about this because me and her could relate to each other. She was the other bi girl in the house. And we talked for like hours about how like, this is fucked up. Like we're over here like fighting for this guy. Like, you know, it's like kind of feel like they're pinning women against each other. That's what it felt like, you know, like why am I hating this girl? Cause she had a one-on-one -on -one date with him. Like, you know, and maybe it's getting better over the years now. I think women are, you know, starting to come together and stuff on the show I'm hearing. But back then it was like, they wanted us to like hate each other, like mm -hmm. be mean. And I'm like, this is not okay. You mm -hmm. know? And I'm like, if there was a woman up here that we were fighting for, I doubt it would be this way. <laughs> Right. It would be a wholly different like situation. But again, that was 2016 where things were just so different on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's the whole problem. It's so anti-feminist mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. And when you think about it, like there was a moment where we were in, I think, Wisconsin. We went to his hometown. <laughs> yeah. We went to his hometown. We had a shovel shit. They took us to Wisconsin because he's from Wisconsin, I guess. Is it Wisconsin? Yes, Wisconsin. <laughs> this cheese is that a place for cheese? Where? <laughs> so we went there, and we had to go to a farm, and we had to shovel shit. And I'm like, I'm like, this is this is what we're doing. We're shoveling shit to win his love and affection. Like, how is this real life? Yeah, that's when it that's hit me. Dark. This is a TV show. Like, this is a TV show because <laughs> I'm not shoveling shit <laughs> for love. <laughs> like, it was so bad. I was like, what is happening? Like, yeah, we really were shoveling shit. I think the thing is when you're in it though, you're so in it that like you, you think what you're doing, is, like, it's right. Like you're supposed to be doing this. Like, yes, I'm going to shovel brainwashed. this. You're brainwashed. Because I want to make this date. I want this date. Like you think this is normal? This is not normal. Oh like, yeah. my God. I don't think they do dates like that anymore. Probably not. Right. They're probably all fun and cool. Yeah. I don't think they're shoveling shit. Yes. I hate to tell you. Right. I hate to break it to you. I was like, of course I get on the group date that has to do this. And it's a group date. Yes, it was and a group date. Group we're all in a group date. It was like the funny and looking back, it was so funny. And like when we were getting back that night, I was like, what did we just do? It was like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. What are other crazy moments um, that you look back on and you're like, what the fuck was that? We had to go, we were in New Orleans and it was like this plantation we were on. 
No. Girl, that's, I was like, you know what? And there was only like three black girls at the time. I think me, Rachel, and Jamie, the three black girls left. And of course we go to this plantation and I'm like- All three of you on this yes, group date? it was all no. of them, but it was like other, not just us, but it was like everybody. We all had to go. It was like the opening of the episode. We got to New Orleans and then our group date was later that night in this like crazy haunted house. And I'm just like, what are we doing again? And then we had to sleep overnight there. And I'm looking at Jamie like, don't you feel weird? Like this, like, I feel like there's like slave energy here. Like, I mean, this is, it was bad. It bad was spirits. bad. And I'm looking around like, why are we doing this again? This is so bad. We're on a plantation. We went from shoveling shit to a plantation. plantation. This is not. Literally. I'm like, do they do this anymore? I don't think so. Because they there's no freaking way. The so, shit that they used to get yes. away with on reality As I'm TV. like, how do they do this? And they thought it was funny. I'm like, and they're like giving us a tour and telling us about the plantation. I'm sitting there like, I'm like can they read the room a little bit? It's a little awkward. Oh yes. my God. Okay. So when did you know you needed to leave? Get the fuck out of here. We were in St. Thomas and we're on a boat and another group date. <laughs> and I was, like, I was the queen of group dates. You never got a one-on-one. Never got a one-on-one. Oh my so God. I was like frustrated. Like everybody's had one at this moment. And I remember being on this boat and all the girls were like laughing and giggling at his jokes, but like he wasn't really giving jokes. He was just like saying weird dumb shit and he started doing like this weird thing with his leg oh, like no. and it's like private area like I think okay. he was like you know just <laughs> stupid shit that a guy would do that's like not cute but like fratty boy type thing <laughs> and I'm like ew I was so turned off like I was disgusted <laughs> I'm sitting on this boat like I just want to get off I'm disgusted this is nasty like he is not cute I'm like over it I did a whole interview right off the book they're like what's wrong with you I'm like I want to go home I'm done. I literally said, I want to go home. I'm over it. And they're like, no, he really likes you. Like, you know, telling me like, he likes you. Like, But I'm like, I don't like him. I'm ready to go. And they're like, no, you have to stay. And I'm like, whatever. So that night I just got lit off my ass. And that's when I got sent home. Cause I knew I was getting sent home. I was like, I was over it. I just wasn't giving anymore. So you were trying. I, I think home. I wanted to like yeah. low key. I think my mind was like, you're out of here. Like just let's throw this Fuck whole place in up. fire. <laughs> Literally. I was like, just fucking throw a table because I just didn't care anymore. I was like over. He was just like, Ugh, give me the ick. I got the ick so bad that day. On the boat. Yes. With the dance. It was like that frat thing, like the fratty boys, you know, <laughs> and just watching the girls like eat it up. I was just like, what is happening? It was so bad. Take me back to my. They loved him. Oh my God. They're obsessed. It was. Wow. It was bad. I had at one point considered on going to going on the bachelor and i'm so everybody glad. oh yeah i'm i'm like you would hate your life <laughs> knowing that i'm like actually gay oh my god you would have i like, think it would have pushed me over the you know, like i'm gay get me out of here <laughs> i'm gay that might have been my coming out you're like yes and they were like oh shit they were like well uh well, who was the guy who was the host um god chris, chris harrison, harrison. like all right well um we're gonna go to commercial break <laughs> i'm at the cocktail and party we'll like be, i want to fuck her and her <laughs> Oh my God. The best way to like leave. Like you're like, you know what? I don't want this rose. I'm leaving. You're, I'm fucking gay. I actually want her ass. I want her too. So fuck all y'all. That would be epic. I'm, gonna, I'm bringing the bachelor that down. Be I'm going on the show to light shit on fire. That would be so epic. Oh my gosh. Literally though. That would have been amazing. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I feel like since nobody knew you were bisexual. Nick didn't even know you were bisexual. That right there is not an accurate portrayal of oh, who you all. are. Do you feel outside of that, that they portrayed you accurately? Uh, How was your edit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody was a character. I will say um, when I watch back, I think they portrayed me like how I am. Like I'm very outspoken and like just tells it how it is. But I do wish they got to see like really who I was, but there was no time. And like you're watching the show and just kind of everything was, was so much drama with the girls. It was like, if I'm, since I'm not in love with him and clearly me and him don't have this connection, it was like, let's make Jasmine have this issue with these other girls. So I think that was like my focus being mm -hmm. on the show, which was kind of annoying, but I think everybody had a part to play. And the, you, you'll notice the girls who made it farther and the girls who had the real connections, who had the one-on-ones, you really got to you know see who they were. You got to learn about their lives and who they really were. But with the rest of us, it's kind of like we were just these little characters, mm -hmm. you know, and no one really got to know us. It was just Jasmine's like the crazy loud girl who likes to party and drink, but it's like, 
well, you really didn't sit me down and really talk about my life unless you were one of those top five girls who are going to make it to the end. Yeah. You know, you really got to be, I think the viewers got to be invested with those girls. Mm -hmm. The rest of us were just like the fun for dramatics to start the fights, to have the issues. But there was never a moment where I felt like they showed like who I really was. Yeah. You know, and that's like unfortunate, but that's how that show was. I mean, after getting out of it and watching other seasons, I'm like, now I see. And I wish I would have known that maybe I wouldn't have done it. But in a way, I think it led, you know, it all worked out. But I can see how each person had like a uh, like a piece to play. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to be this crazy, like you're the crazy girl. Like there's a girl, who thought, like a hot dog, we called the hot dog girl because she oh. brought a hot dog the first night. You're the hot dog girl. And that was like her storyline. And Not then you hot had, dog girl. I swear to God, she brought a raw hot dog and like ate it with him like the first night. Go back and watch. <laughs> yes. So like that was her thing. And then like they made it seem like she was like this crazy person, but she was actually really cool. Like you get to know the people like, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to know each other. And I'm like, she's actually a real cool person. I like her. She's chill and funny. I'm not trying to like here, be here to like bash The Bachelor and say it was awful. Like the show is just more watching it. It's hard to watch now because I know, you know, dating women and seeing how these women are kind of portrayed and fighting for this guy's attention and like what they're going through and being have gone through it. It's like I just sometimes can't get around it. I'm like, oh, please, I can't watch this. So mm-hmm. um that's so interesting. So it's like yes and no to answer your question. Yes, I think they portrayed me the right way, but then they they didn't get to show exactly who I was. There's a lot missing. Yeah. But you still did Paradise. Yes. I will say The Bachelor wasn't a great experience, but I had like my best friends out of it and I will not change that for the world. But I did do Paradise because like my friend said, make it a top 10, you'll get to Paradise, <laughs> which I did. But I will say once I got there, they did try, which is so mind blowing to me to think that they asked me on Paradise, did I want to go on a date with one of the girls that were coming in? But they didn't ask me, you know, on The Bachelor I was like, not talking about it. Of course. No one's going to talk about it here, but Paradise was like the sloppy, like second child, you know. Yeah. Anything goes. Yeah. So, so yeah, I was asked So that. homophobic to be like, it's yeah, so okay, you're, you date women and so does this girl. So let's just put you two on Literally, it. my friend Jamie was coming in, who I talked about was on my season and she's actually like my best friend and I knew she was coming and she gets there and they're like, well, do you want to go on a date with Jamie? And I'm like, Guys, just because she's bi and I'm bi doesn't mean like the two gay girls are going to go on a date right now. Like she's actually my friend. It's like she's like my sister. <laughs> like I'm not going to date with her. Oh, my God. Like that is a straight person is not just going to date with anybody just because, you know, they're straight. Like, no, like there has to be some attraction. There's something like and she's my best friend. Not doing it. Did you learn anything about yourself or your sexuality on The Bachelor? To never change who I am, because mm-hmm. I felt like being on this show, going through it, I would act a certain way, like act like these girls are acting because they were so in love with this guy. And I, and I think going through it, I learned, you know what, just be who you are. And I think that's when I had that moment, like, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. So I learned just be true to yourself. That's Mm -hmm. really being true to yourself. I think at the end of the day, it's going to, you know, outweigh everything else. What a transferable message too, because it really does like all of these ways are kind of how I felt growing up of like, man, I'm supposed to fall in love with this guy and I'm supposed to get married by the time I'm 25. And this is what everybody's telling me I'm supposed to do. But like, I don't think that's really like something isn't sitting right, but you can't really place it. And then it just clicks. Yeah. And something just clicks and you're like, "Mm, I need to be who I am. That's one thing that I learned, just being true to yourself. And Nick was, I guess, the last man I... (laughs) If you want to call it dating relationship. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah. I'm telling you that dance on the boat did it for me. It was like, (laughs) he sold it. I was like, you know what? I think I'm done with the men right now. (laughs) Took a break. Yeah. Went on dates, like casual dates of men here and there, but uh, serious relationship. No. Where are you now post bachelor nation? That was old. That was a nut. That was a chapter years ago. I'm like a whole new person now. I think, you know, I'm in a relationship, a healthy relationship. Um, Melissa, she's amazing. And we live together. We have a place here in LA. We have a place in Jersey. You know, it's just right now I'm really happy. And I think I wish this Jasmine was able to be shown then, Mm -hmm. you know, because I think people would be able to relate more and like see like, wow, there's more to her than what they try to show back then. Yeah. But you are kind of having this like redemption moment and representing two groups of people that have not been represented on Bravo at all, which is yes. black people and yes. lesbians, Yes, which is so great to 100%. see. And that's why I signed on to do the Valley. Mm. I really wanted... 
like let people see like you can be bisexual, you can be gay, you can have a great relationship with your girlfriend, your soon to be partner and like live in LA and have a good time. You don't have to have a baby to yeah. you know, live in California and like be successful. So I think that is something that I was really excited about doing the show. Yeah. I love it. I think what you're doing is great. Yeah. It's going to be good. I mean, hopefully most will be on it more. She was in contract with Netflix, you know, she did Squid Game, so she couldn't really film as much, but she's going to be there, but season two. Yeah. We'll see. Pray. We'll see how it goes. Oof. I love it. It's it dark. <laughs> gets dark guys, but it gets better. I, I mean, that's swear. good for ratings. So <sighs> yeah, but the stress it brings to your life. I don't like dealing with it. What are you working on in therapy? Right now I'm working on in therapy, learning how to say no. <laughs> um, I say yes to everything and that's my problem. I'm always just want to do too much. Mm -hmm. And I think I, cause I want to make people happy. Mm -hmm. And I know talking to my ther therapist, we were like, listen, you can't say yes to everything. You have to learn to put yourself first and say no. And that's so hard for me. Like, it's so hard for me to say no, 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 no. I'm always like, yes, I want to do everything. And Melissa's always like, you can't do that. And I, I don't know why I have this struggle. So that's one thing I've been in therapy right now talking with and trying to deal with. It's like so hard for me. I love that. How do you so decipher hard. the things to say yes and no to? Honestly, taking a second before I respond, because mm -hmm. I usually am like, if you hit me up and said, hey, do you want to go happy hour today? i would be like, yes, let's go. <laughs> no, taking a second to not respond right away. It's like yeah. not being reactive. That's another thing, like not being reactive right away and learning to take a second and think about what I really have to do and what's going to be good for myself first before somebody else. Yeah. Take the beat. Yeah. Because I'm it. not good at that. All right. You haul or you ghost? <laughs> Those are the only options. I, probably U-Haul for sure. Wait, I'm going to give I'm it to a, you. I'm not like a ghost, like ghosting someone. Wait, I am wait, not wait, a ghoster. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like, am I a ghoster? Or I'm going to U-Haul. I'm going to U-Haul. I am such an emotional like person. I'm a cancer. I love hard. Like, so it's like, you know, I'm a U-Haul. You, you haul my friends. Everybody's in my life. Like you're not going anywhere. You're stuck with okay. Me. Well, what if they believe in aliens? Oh, that's hard because I kind of believe in aliens I too. I believe in aliens. So <laughs> I'm going to say you all. You yeah. all. Yeah. Aliens are real. Because people like look at me like crazy when I talk about aliens, but I think they're real. There's no way we're the only people on this little, on this rock in space. Like, it's just impossible. I, I, they're out there. What There's do you mean Alex like there. to say? It's, it's ignorant. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's no, we are not that, like we are so small. We are not special. Okay. Yes. Let me tell you that we are not special. There is definitely something out there. So yeah, you haul. You haul aliens. Yep. <laughs> All right. What if they're a bad tipper? Oh, uh, ghost. ghost. Definitely ghost. I agree. I worked in the service industry, so I totally get it. And nothing pisses me off than people that are rude to servers and don't know how to tip. I so, agree. You ghost. ghost. 100%. They chew with their mouth open, Ugh. but the, it's, it's like, this is the perfect person. Like you Ugh. love it. It's Melissa, Ugh. but she chews with her mouth open. God damn. <laughs> okay. We're going to U-Haul, but we're going to have to like go through like an, a class, etiquette <laughs> class to teach her because I love her so much. But if it wasn't Melissa, ghost. Okay. I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> we're U-Hauling, but I'm changing. Yeah. You. I would try to change <laughs> That's hard. That's a tough one for anyway, me. Just, That's like, I have it burned into my brain. I can hear my dad shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> like, and not even that, like, I think I would just stare at it and like think that I might just like snap. So, and I don't want to end up on like, you know, 60 minutes or anything. <laughs> so I think it's better that we just ghost. I don't have to deal with that. Get out early. Yeah. Okay. Fair. What if they don't believe in celebrating anniversaries? Probably ghost. I think so too. Because I feel like that's special. You don't have to do something over the top, but just like acknowledging it, like a little gift or something special. I think that's cute. So the fact that you want to ignore it, eh, it's kind of giving me a little red flag. Like non-committal. Like, come? It's my, my birthday is next. You don't want to yeah, celebrate exactly. anniversaries. You don't want to do an anniversary. What about birthdays? Christmas, birthdays, <laughs> like milestones, like just birth the baby for you. Like, <laughs> are you not going to give me something? Yeah. Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. All right. I love it. Good job. We're on the same page. Thanks. Okay, good. Yay. <laughs> I know that alien one. I was like, oh, people think I'm crazy when I talk about aliens. They do. So I'm like, should I say this? I'm saying it. Say it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Do you have I any this. final thoughts, words, 
a Aww. cheers. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me here. I love what you're doing. This is like such an amazing space. Um, and I'm proud of you. Like, Aww. I don't, I just think about how we met and everything. Like literally we went on a blind date, yes, a blind, a date, blind double date, which is like crazy. Cause I thought it was never going to happen. Cause you know, you say you're going to do something. People all do all the time and they're like, Oh yeah, let's meet. It never happens. So the fact that it happened, I was like, yes, finally some new friends, gay friends in LA. It's so yes, hard to find. Yes. Well, for me it is. I don't know. I just have a struggle. I've struggled with finding like friends out here. So I'm just thankful that it worked out. Yeah. And Cheers to gay Cheers. friends. Yay. Gay Love friends it. in LA. Thank you all for listening to today's episode. As always, help us spread the gay agenda by writing an Apple review, rating us on Spotify, and sharing it with everyone you've ever met. You can find today's guest at Jasmine Good underscore, our show at Made It Out Podcast, and me at Mal Glowinky. Made It Out is produced and edited by Matilde Jordan and worked on solely by lesbians. We only just met, but I think I'm in love. Shall I call a U-Haul? <laughs>